NATO chief says the increased presence of the military alliance in Eastern Europe sends a clear message to any would-be aggressor. Good morning, the Secretary General. Today and tomorrow we will uh, make uh, decisions to strengthen our defense and uh, deterrence. And uh, I expect uh, the defense ministers to agree to enhance our forward presence in the eastern part of our uh, alliance. This will send a clear signal. NATO will respond uh, as one to any aggression against any uh, ally. Jan Stoltenberg made the remarks during a news conference in NATO headquarters in Brussels. He said the deployment of NATO troops in Eastern Europe would act as a deterrence against Russia. NATO defense ministers are in Brussels for a two-day conference to discuss the deterrence and defense strategy of the alliance on Russia and other security challenges. Ties between Russia and the West soured following the crisis in Ukraine. Moscow accuses the U.S. and other Western countries of interfering in Ukraine's internal affairs and stoking up tensions there. Marcus Papadopoulos is a publisher and editor of Politics First, joining us from London. So, Marcus Papadopoulos, we're looking at this conference here. Let's talk about the news, I guess. And it keeps saying Russia the aggressor, aggressor and building up a defense against the Russia, as if it's Russia that is doing the aggression. But then you have the buildup in the Baltic states. So, who's the aggressor here? Well, the aggressor is NATO. The criminal is NATO. Russia is merely responding to what, what is a very grave security um, threat. Now, since the collapse of the Soviet Union, NATO has expanded eastwards uh, beyond Germany's borders, right up to Russia's borders. So if you take a, a map of modern-day Europe, from the Baltic Sea to the Black Sea, with the exception of Ukraine, Russia's western borders are littered with NATO member states. And that poses a very serious threat um, to the Russian Federation. And also the Americans, um, in conjunction with NATO, are constructing a missile defense field in Eastern Europe, which of course is going to be aimed at Russia's uh, strategic nuclear deterrent. So why shouldn't Russia take steps to try and counter uh, the threat from NATO on its western borders? How would America like it, for example, if there was a Russian-led military alliance um, in Mexico? The Americans wouldn't to tolerate that. So why should Russia tolerate it on its borders? And of course, this is somewhat reinforced by uh, the fact that the U.S. has increased its uh, military budget by $3 billion to counter mm. what it calls the Russian threat. And at this point, uh, there, is, uh, there are estimates that there's up to 40,000 U.S. troops in um, Eastern Europe, uh, at the height of it, there were 300,000, so it's inching closer to that. How do you see the U.S. role here? Well, uh, the, the U.S. is the unofficial leader of NATO, of course. Everyone, everyone knows that. And why has NATO, under American leadership, expanded eastwards in the last 20 years, up, up to Russia's western borders? Because the Americans, even in the 1990s, when Russia was on its knees uh, politically, economically and militarily, the Americans knew that Russia had the potential to reclaim much of its lost superpower status and thereby challenge um, uh, American political dominance in the world. And of course we can refer to the Pentagon's defense planning guidance of 1992, also known as the Wolfovich Doctrine, after its architect, Paul Wolfovich. And that doctrine made it very clear that Russia will remain the only country in the world which can destroy the United States, which can challenge American dominance in the world, and steps need to be taken to weaken Russia in the long term. And that means expanding eastwards um, into the former Eastern Bloc countries, but also into former into countries which used to be a part of the Soviet Union. So Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania. And of course, Ukraine is the missing piece in the jigsaw. If Ukraine was to come into NATO, which Russia would never allow to happen, but hypothetically, if it did, then Russia would be very, very weakened um, on its western borders in Europe. And the security of the Russian Federation um, would also be at great risk. But history has shown us that Russia has never tolerated 
its security, its security being threatened. And you know, 30 million Russians didn't perish in the Second World War destroying Nazism so that 70 years on, the security of Russia could be threatened by NATO. So NATO um, will not achieve its objective in attempting to weaken Russia because Russia is Russia. Russia hasn't been defeated in history and Russia won't be defeated by NATO. Thank you for that. Marcus Papadopoulos, publisher and editor of Politics First from London.